go and then is subscribe to my channel they were like you should do a video about this and i'm like uh i normally don't do videos like this because people get so sensitive about this these kind of subjects and there was a time years ago when i used to just get under people's skin when i used to bring the word of god or talk about certain things i used to bring things that was hidden in the darkness to the light and i got so many people to attack me you know what i'm saying and so i just as i matured i learned how to do uh, present certain things or speak about certain things and use wisdom about it and um, so that's what I'm trying to do today and so I would not have done this video if someone would not have asked me because I know things like this topics like like this people get so uh, upset about it when you talk about money and, and things like that and um, you know and it wasn't the world that was attacking me it was the church people that was attacking me about um, certain things I would talk about and certain things I would minister about. It was the people in the church and it's really sad, but whatever. Um, you always hear people say you need to study your word, study your Bible. But when you really study your Bible, when you really study the word of God, I'm, I'm looking over here because my Bible is right here. When you really study the word of God and when you really know what the word of God says, you start to have this discernment. And so now I can see, you know, and I'm a type of person that I, I observe a lot to like I look at everything I'm listening to everything you know I'm trying to see if you're right or you're wrong if you twisted it or what you have done with the word of God and so I'm that type of person and I can tell if it's intentional or if they just misunderstood the scripture but when you study you really study you become like really dangerous because you know exactly what the word of God says and you're not just gonna go for anything and some things we kind of let slide you know just because we don't want to cause any confusion and some things we just have to talk about like it just it just has to be said and we're living in a time where we have to bring these things to the light so that people can become free and so that people can grow um in their walk with god and so that's what i'm trying to do tonight so you know i already know people are going to come for me maybe unsubscribe to my channel that is fine with me as long as i'm doing what the lord is calling me to do i prayed about this video that i would not lead anyone astray i would not lead anyone away from god or um lead anyone with my own wisdom but with the wisdom of the holy ghost and so that's why we're going to go to the scripture first i want to talk about the situation that was brought to me okay so this is the situation if if today's the 31st and your rent is due on the first or your mortgage is due on the first and today's the 31st and it's a sunday and you're at church and they ask for a seed and it's your rent should you give it or not so that was the situation that came to me this is this was my response to the person but it was short and so that's why i want to do the video to really explain explain everything but this is what i say if you want to give your rent to the church then that is fine no one should stop you from doing that if you want to give if you want to give it if you want to give it you should give it so that's that's what i say if you want to get it, if anyone should get, want it to give it you shouldn't say anything about it you shouldn't stop them let them give it if that is what they want to do if it was me and tomorrow's the first I'm, I'm gonna pay my rent i'm gonna pay my rent and whatever i have left over and i can uh spare that then i'll give that to the church if it was asked me it's been only two times that i can ever even think about when god has like put it on my heart when i'm sitting in the service and say you need to give this certain amount to this person that happened to me i believe twice if i'm not mistaken twice so um i believe in being really led to give a certain amount not someone telling me what to give that is me that is me and i'm gonna tell you why according to the scripture so like i said whatever you want to give you should give it it doesn't matter how much it is nothing is too big nothing is too small whatever you want to give to help the ministry of the church you should give it if that is what you want to do so we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 right now. Everyone already know these scriptures. People talk about it all the time. There's so many videos on YouTube about it, but I want to talk about it right now. So I'm hot right now. My fan is off because I'm, I don't want the noise to be in the mic. So I have to rush this video. So um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 7 says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart 
in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. And we've already heard this before. We already know you don't give because somebody tells you to give. You give because it's what God put on your heart to give. It's what you purpose in your heart. You decide in your heart, this is what I'm going to give. This is what. How many times have we said, oh, man, I really want to bless them. You know, her, you know, son may need some shoes. I'm going to go and find some shoes in my closet or my son's closet. Get some shoes together and I'm going to take it to them. This is what God loves. You have already decided in your heart that this is what I want to do for them. And you did it and you were happy about it. You had joy about it that you helped somebody. And so that is what God loves when you are cheerful. You're, you're in a good spirit. Like you're happy about it that you did something good in the sight of the Lord. Because God honors those things. We already know that God honors what's done in secret. And so that is what God is saying. This is what this is Paul speaking. This is Paul speaking telling the church how to give. So. He wants you to be a cheerful giver. You don't give it like, like, ugh, ugh. So if you sowed a seed or you gave your rent to the church and then afterwards you felt bad about it or the next day you don't know what you're going to do, you're stressed out, then you probably should have kept your money in your pocket because God loves a cheerful giver. And if you're going to stress out about it and if you're going to wonder about it and ask people should you have done it or not, then you probably should not have done it because you're supposed to give what you have purpose in your heart to give i'm gonna go ahead and keep reading like it's so good i know sometimes we want a, like a quick answer but we don't want to read scripture and get an understanding but we really need to dive deep into this whole chapter so this is um second corinthians chapter 9 we're going to read the eight verse also um and god is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always have in all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance in every good word given is a word it's a part of a word for the lord and chap uh verse 9 he has dispersed he has dispersed abroad he has given to the poor his righteousness endures forever this is talking about me when it says he has given to the poor. This is this whole thing is talking about meeting the needs of the people or a person or apostle or whoever it may be. Whoever needs may have a need. This is talking about meeting the need. It's not talking about trying to make somebody rich. It's not talking about trying to uh, overflow someone who who's already taken care of, who already has everything that they needed. This is about helping people who have needs meet a need and making a difference. That, that's what this is talking about. So we're going to skip down to verse 12 says for the administration of this service, talking about the giving. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints. Not only supplies the needs of the saints. So when you give, it should supply the needs of the saints. There's a whole nother video that I don't even know if I'm ready to even go into. Because I really know I'm going to be shut down all the way. But, okay. So for the administration of this service, not only supplies the needs of the saints, not only the needs of the saints, but also abounding through many thanksgivings to God. Wow. Though the proof of this ministry, this is a ministry. Giving is a ministry. Some people have the gift of giving. That's a ministry. Some people have more than enough that they can give. That is a ministry. You be wondering, what can I do for the ministry? And then you sitting over there with a bank account with millions of dollars, then you could be giving. You could be given. So while through the proof of this ministry, the glory of God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men, all men. This is not just about giving to a pastor. This is not what this is talking about. It's talking about giving to all men that are in need. That is what this is talking about. And by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God. In you okay so that was uh second corinthians chapter nine so we know that we should be a cheerful giver we know that this is about meeting the needs and i'm gonna go to x chapter two really quick when we go to x chapter two so in x chapter in x in the book of x this is when the church kind of formed together and the church started growing this is this time you know when you know, the people after the Pentecost, after the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, after that, they started to, the church started to grow. So in Acts chapter 2, verse, we're going to start at 45. Well, no, let's start at 44. 44 says, now all who believed were together. All who believed were together. 
this is going to show you how the church is supposed to be. Now, all who believe were together and had all things in common. They had all things in common. The church had all things in common. This is not the kind of church we see today. So if you feel like you want to give your rent to the church and that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Be happy about it. When you do, don't complain. Don't go and talk about it. Just do it. Actually, do it in secret. Don't even tell nobody you did it. Just do it. But I'm saying I wouldn't do it just because... I have to have somewhere to sleep. I have to have somewhere for my children to sleep. God bless me with income to be able to afford what I where I am staying. And sometimes, you know, I ain't gonna talk about it, but that is what that's for. I'm not gonna go to the church and ask them to pray my rent when I have it in my hands. So Okay, so they had all things coming. And sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. We're talking about needs. We're not talking about wants. We're not talking about like desires. We're talking about meeting needs. These people got together. The people who had land and possessions, they sold it and divided it. And at uh, one point, they laid it in, at the apostles' feet and the apostles divided it out gave it out as the people had need this is what this is talking about so I, i'm trying to connect something in your brain like i'm trying this is what i'm trying to say the church what is the church the body the body the people make up the church so when you're saying giving to the church you're talking about giving to the people but in reality in today's church system when you're talking about giving to the church you're talking about giving to the leaders of the church in the church building you're not talking about giving to the people in the church now the new testament does not talk about tithing so i'm not going to talk about that but i i just want to say this really quick that the tithes were also for to meet needs of the people god was always concerned about the people when he said so that they there would be meats in my house he really meant literally food in my house for those that did not have food you know and so when we're talking about giving to the ministry, like if I can't come to the ministry, which I wouldn't even need to because I have a job and I'm able to pay my rent, I I wouldn't come asking them to give me my rent. You know what I'm saying? So if you give your rent to the church, make sure you have something in the bank to pay your rent with. Now, God can do miracles. He can make things happen when you give out of your heart. He can make turn around and make somebody bless you. But I'm saying like the whole part of the giving is when we give to the church is supposed to be for the church, for the body. That is what how it was in the books, book of Acts. So they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all men as er anyone had need. They divided them among all men. I'm just going to say, do you see that happening today? So if you don't see that happening today, then whatever you feel in your heart or whatever anger you're feeling about this video and this word, then you should just really go pray about it because that is not the same church we have today. When we give to the ministry, the ministry should also pour out. It's not just for one person or two people or prophets and all of this. The ministry should be meeting needs. So if you give your rent to the church and then you're struggling, you don't have anywhere to stay or anywhere to go, then that's kind of on you, you know, and that that's what if you decided to do it. Remember in James, I pulled this up too. James chapter one. What verse is it? Verse 27. He was saying this is the book of James. He was saying that religion that is pure and undefiled before God. The father is this to visit the orphans and the widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Everything that we do should be about each other. The whole church system should be about each other. It shouldn't be about just one man show. No one should actually give anything and it's going to hurt you. No one should. They have a saying saying give to her. To, till it hurts give to it hurts that is not in the bible i have searched it searched it i cannot find it nothing that says give till it hurts but paul tells us to be a cheerful giver 
And we know when we give, whatever we sow, that God is going to come back to us. So that's why I say if it's something you purpose in your heart to do, then do it. Because it's going to come back to you one way or the other. That God is going to be pleased with you. And he's going to increase you in, in one area of your life or another. So I'm just saying, make sure you pray about things before you do things. Like if you got to wonder or ask people about it and you're not sure about it, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it, you know. But you pray to God that you get a revelation and understanding of what you're supposed to do. One thing I do is I give to my church ministry and I make sure my bills are paid. I'm not going to, if I ever came to a point where my bills are short or whatever, then I'm just not going to give. Because the whole purpose of the church is to make sure the needs of the people are supplied. So I'm going to make sure they're supplied so I won't have to pull on the church. So the people who really, really need that support is able to get that support from the church ministry. So I hope, I hope y'all understand what I'm trying to say to you today through this video. What I'm trying to say to you through the word of God. Search the word of God and don't just read one scripture. I'm just doing this for the sake of the video in time, but read the whole Bible. Like really read Acts is really good to let you know how the church function in that time and how we're so off today. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're not really operating fully the way that God wants us was, wants us to operate. And know this too. It's not just about giving to the church. That's one part of it. But some of y'all, God is calling you to give to different people around you. There's people who are struggling around you. And you have more than enough. You have your children have more than enough. And you can really be a blessing to people. You know, sometimes God will come as an angel and disguise himself to see who is woke. To see who is paying attention attention to see who is going to give to them you remember in matthew and i think it was chapter 25 uh, i think it was chapter 25, right when when god when jesus said you know when i was when i was thirsty you gave me a drink when i was hungry you fed me when i was naked you clothed me clothed me when i was sick you came to see about me when i was in prison you came to visit me remember those things this is what giving is about you know our giving our perspective of giving is a little off Remember how the Bible tells us to give. And whenever you do, do it with joy in your heart, whoever you give to. And it's good to give to the church ministries because they do need that help. They do need that help. Things do need to be taken care of. But not only the church building, but people have to be taken care of also. And we cannot ever, ever, ever forget that. We will miss the mark when we get into ourselves, when we're only thinking about physical things we will miss the mark we need to see in the spirit and know what god is calling us to do according to his word and his spirit in these days i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope this video really answered that question that was brought to me y'all stay tuned to my next video